Today I'm going to show you how to make some festive matcha crinkle cookies that are just plain delicious regardless of the time of year. So stick around! With a crisp sweet shell surrounding a soft bittersweet matcha center, these matcha crinkles have an addictive balance of textures and tastes that make it pretty hard to stop at just one cookie. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve to give these crinkle cookies the perfect texture. But the flavor is all about the matcha, and today I'm using culinary matcha from the sponsor of this video, D Matcha. But before I tell you more about them, let's start with a look at our ingredients. I've got four tablespoons of unsalted butter, two eggs, 135 grams or about two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar, 140 grams or about one cup of all purpose flour, 15 grams or about 3 tablespoons of culinary matcha from D Matcha, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, and an eighth teaspoon of salt. I've also got about a third cup each of granulated sugar and powdered sugar to make the crinkle cookie crust. First, you want to sift the flour, matcha, baking powder, and salt. Matcha can form clumps as it's being stored, so this ensures that you get it distributed evenly into the dough. Once it's sifted, go ahead and stir the mixture together so it's uniform in color. The next thing we want to do is break the eggs into a bowl. Then I'm going to add the sugar and beat them together until it's nice and frothy and creamy yellow in color. I'm using a stand mixer today, but you can use an egg beater or whisk to do this as well. This is going to take a few minutes, so let's melt the butter in the microwave oven while we wait. I'm going to go for about a minute and a half at 300 watts to keep the butter from exploding. Okay, that looks about right, and our mixture is looking nice and creamy, so I'm going to slowly beat this into the eggs. If you're doing this by hand, get an assistant to help you, or just incorporate it in batches. Now I'm going to dump all of the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients and stir this together until the dough is evenly mixed. Be careful not to overmix it though, or your cookies are going to end up tough. If all went well, you should have a soft dough that's about the consistency of frosting. We need to chill this to make it workable, and my mixer bowl won't fit in my fridge, so I'm going to transfer the batter to a smaller bowl. Now I'm going to pop this into the fridge and let it chill for at least one hour. While we wait for that to chill, let me tell you about how I got the cookie dough so green. The key to the flavor and color of these cookies is to use fresh matcha, and today's sponsor sends theirs straight from their farm in the mountains of Kyoto. Founded with the desire to preserve the culture of Japanese tea farming in a sustainable way, D Matcha grows and processes their own tea and ships it worldwide. Aside from their huge variety of matcha, they also have a great selection of loose leaf teas like sencha and hojicha. And if you get your order in by the 10th, this matcha bundle or this mini Christmas set make great holiday gifts. They've also been nice enough to offer us a 5% discount, so head over to their site using the link in the description to pick up the perfect gifts for all the tea lovers in your life. To bake the matcha cookies, I'm going to preheat the oven to 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to line a baking sheet with parchment paper and I also have my bowls of granulated sugar and powdered sugar. Now we can grab the dough from the fridge and get to the fun part. I'm going to scoop out a golf ball sized piece of dough and drop it into the bowl with the granulated sugar. Then I'm going to roll it around in the sugar to give it an even dusting of sugar crystals. Once it's coated, you can roll it around between your hands to shape it into a ball. Next, I'm going to transfer it to the powdered sugar and roll it around until it's totally white. This two sugar process ensures you get a nice crispy crust on the outside and a beautiful contrast between the white powdered sugar and the emerald green cookie. 
These cookies shouldn't spread out a ton, so you can arrange them fairly close together without having to worry about them running into each other. If you portioned your dough well, you should end up with about a dozen matcha crinkle cookies. Now I'm going to make sure the cookies are evenly spaced, and let's get these into the oven. As the dough heats up, the balls will flatten out, and as it puffs, the sugar crust will crack, forming those trademark crinkles in the surface of our cookies. To get a soft center, you want to get them out of the oven before the center is fully cooked, and this took about 11 minutes in my convection oven. But every oven is a little different, so be sure to keep an eye on them. Okay, these are looking perfect, so let's get them out of the oven and onto a cooling rack to cool for a few minutes. Then you want to get them off the pan so the residual heat from the pan doesn't overcook the cookies. I usually just slide the parchment paper straight off the pan and onto the cooling rack like this. Now we just need to wait for these to fully cool, and our matcha crinkle cookies are done! Mmm, these cookies smell so buttery and delicious. All right, let's take a bite. Oh, it's crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside, and you've got that sweet sugar crust on the outside. It's a great contrast to the matcha on the inside. And I don't know if you can see how green that is, but this is why it's super important to use high quality matcha for this recipe. And D Matcha is the place to get it. So I'll include a link in the description down below, as well as in the pinned comment so you can check it out for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all your friends that love green tea. All right, I'm gonna go whisk up a bowl of matcha to go with these cookies, but check out this playlist for more matcha-based sweets, and I'll catch you in the next one.